y'all it's amanda welcome back to my channel and these are gonna be some contemporary romance book recommendations all right y'all so just in time for the month of love, we have got all the fun Valentine's decor. I've got the fun Valentine's colors on. We've got some uh, bookshelf decor, and we've got some great contemporary romance book regs. I'm so excited for this. Y'all got no idea. <laughs> so all the books in this video will be linked down below. There'll be timestamps as usual, and some of these books you have probably heard me talk about before, so if you want to skip around, please feel free to, but I'm just here to remind you of all of the good contemporary romance book regs that I have loved over the past year. And I did have a video last year for Valentine's Day, great contemporary romance book regs. So I will leave that down below if you've not checked that out. I will not be including any of those books in this video, with the exception, I guess, of one honorable mention because I want to mention the second book in the series. How about that? But this video is going to highlight some of my favorite clean or Christian contemporary romance books I've read since making the last video last year. So without further ado, let's dive in, okay? So the first book I want to mention actually is one I actually forgot to mention in the Christian romance book tag. What? <laughs> if you haven't seen that, I'll link that as well. That was one of my last videos, maybe the last video you saw. And this is the masterpiece by Francine Rivers. Francine Rivers, I have only read a few of her books. I've uh, four of her books now, and uh, I have read Redeeming Love. That really was one of the first um, Christian romance books I had read as well, but this is a contemporary romance that she wrote that is very layered and in-depth. It was five stars for me. It's very beautiful, emotional, raw story of two characters that really experience healing through Jesus. Uh, I didn't realize just how much I would love this Look at the annotations, honey. Annotations to the nth degree is what we call it. Annotations, but we call it annotations. Anyway, uh, but this story really still sticks with me with some spiritual warfare that our, one of our characters goes through in this, and it's really going to just pull at your heartstrings. And so in this one, we have Grace Moore and Roman Velasco, and each have their own traumatic past that they were dealing with. Grace is a believer in Jesus, but Roman is not. And we really see how the Lord pursues Roman in this story and how Grace is the one that helps lead him there, okay? Robin is this very rich artist and we see Grace basically work as his assistant and uh, she's struggling to provide for her son as a single mother. This job is everything that she needs and as she gets to know Roman, feelings start to happen of course and the rest is history, okay? If you're looking for a book that's going to touch your heart and your soul and make you cry, this is it. Francine, she never disappoints. The next book is one that I don't currently own. That is Juniper Bean Resorts to Murder and this is kind of thrown in as more of like a rom-com but also a murder mystery <laughs> okay cozy mystery but kind of like uh, borders a lot of cozy i guess it's just like more of a rom-com mystery okay but i want to throw it in here because it's one that i absolutely loved i get four and a half stars run it up to five on goodreads and i need to get my hands on physical copy because the cover is gorgeous but this is by uh, gracie ruth mitchell and there's another book in the series i want to check out at some point but this is a really great clean rom-com cozy mystery kind of all in one and i i think the audiobook is the way to go with this uh you know this is one that had a male and female narrator and it was top tier narration so so good and in this, we see uh, Aiden and Juniper, and their little couple name is uh, Adiper and Junipaid. <laughs> we love to see it. Juniper is this character who is a fun, quirky girl. She has pink hair, ye fun yellow car. She's just a really fun character. But she's been through a lot over the last 10 years. Her mother passed away, and she never knew her father. She was in foster care due to her mother's neglect. Really tough time for her. And her life pretty much changes when she meets Aiden. He is just the greatest book boyfriend in this. I loved his character. He's five years older than Juniper and they have quite the past together. I'm not gonna say too much, but they haven't seen each other in years and it turns out that they're actually going to be roommates. So in this, we have like this forced proximity trope, but it's a completely clean romance, okay? It's not a Christian book, but it is clean. Aiden doesn't want anything to do with her because of what happened in their past together, but they are kind of forced together and it is just a good time, okay? He's more of like this grumpy guy and she is definitely the sunshine and I love a good grumpy sunshine trope. Things get crazy when they are forced to get to know one another by working on this mystery, okay? There is this person who's supposed to tell Juniper about her real father and they go to find her and the girl is dead and they're like, what has happened? And Aiden's a teacher at this local high school and he's gonna pretty much help her figure out everything about her father and the murder of this 
girl who was killed. It makes you laugh. It has all the emotions. And Aiden really stole my heart. He is the best book boyfriend. Again, he was just like this caring guy. And he was very involved in this food bank organization. And his past Jennifer to me was very beautiful. Like once you kind of see how everything was put together. Um, and like the back and forth banter was hilarious. It really reminds me of the hubs in me. Okay, leave a review down below for any content trigger warnings as well. So you can check that out more in depth. But yeah, this is a good the one. The next thing I want to mention is Can't Help Falling by Courtney Walsh. Let me just say... Courtney Walsh, five star. This is like a total Amanda book, y'all. It really was. Uh, Emmy and Owen are our main characters in this. A best friend's brother, opposites attract, childhood crush, a firefighter rescue. I need all the firefighter rescue romances at this point, okay? Uh, but we have this bookish female main character. It's a clean romance. This has disability representation. Dyslexia is represented in this book. There's a dual point of view, and there's a small town and some fall vibes. I think this book can honestly be read anytime. Like, it's not so many fall vibes that you're just, like, that's completely immersed in the fall setting. So, I think you can read this anytime. You can read this now. <laughs> it was just so good. So, this story starts off with Emmy, and she has her bookish podcast. And it's kind of a secret. Nobody really knows that it's her. It's under the secret name. And she ends up giving, like, all this romance advice to people. Kind of like that old radio talk show, Delilah. It's the thing starts off with her house catching on fire. And Owen is the firefighter who rescues her. Turns out Owen is her best friend's brother who she had a childhood crush on. They've not seen each other in eight years. They're starting to reconnect and through this rescue process. And it's such a good story. I loved it. I related to Emmy in a lot of ways. She prefers books and pajamas over going out and partying. Yes, girl. And she's a hopeless romantic. Yes, girl. And uh, I, I love that she loves Pride and Prejudice. There's some stuff in here about Pride and Prejudice in the movie. Uh, me, girl. Yes. <laughs> and so she wanted her hand flexing Mr. Mr. Darcy. And I was here for it, girl. Okay, we love to see it. Owen is this really great protector and I loved his just complex character and learning about his life of how he struggled with the dyslexia that was very important to learn about he really cares about Owen when no one else did uh you know and then there's like these fun emails and chats that start to kind of go on in this book as well it's a great rom-com and I highly recommend it the next book I want to mention I don't have a physical copy of but it's How to Kiss Your Best Friend by Jenny Proctor this is book one in the Hawthorne Brothers series and this is a clean rom-com I started reading a lot of rom-coms not a lot but I several rom-coms in the last year and this was one that I really enjoyed. I gave this four stars. It is a friends to lovers rom-com. I really enjoyed the characters. There's great small town vibes to this one. The Hawthorne brothers are hilarious. I need to continue on in this series honestly. It's chemistry teacher and professional kayaker Brody and a journalist and a traveler Kate. Okay so they were best friends growing up but Kate took some time to travel over the years and with so much going on in her own family life you know she's just taking some time to travel and do life on her own right. She comes back to her hometown. She's going to her grandmother's house. They're getting ready to sell it. Brody is just taken back by once again of how much he truly cares for her. He loves her. He's always loved her. He's hoping to reconnect with her and uh, hoping that she will stay in town for good and the story goes over here and I had so much fun with this. They had the best chemistry and it's just a fun time. I love seeing them go kayaking together. There is some uh, great funny moments. The towel scene, if you know, you know. It had me rolling and we really get to know the siblings, the family in this. It's so good. I love that in this. Like you just have all those great family details. Sometimes I wanted them to talk a little bit more but overall I still really enjoy this and I highly recommend it as well. This is more of an honorable mention but another Friends to Lovers books that you books, book that you all might enjoy is Friendship by Savannah Scott. I read this last year. Give it three and a half stars. This was my first rom-com that I read last year in my clean romance rom-com journey and I had so many thoughts of this. I really enjoyed a lot of things. There was, you know, there's great humor and things like that in this. There was some more miscommunication in this one than I would have liked, but overall this has a good friend group, characters, lots of humor, and I really want to read more in this series. There's a lot of books in this series and I've heard some, nothing but good things about Savannah Scott. She is wonderful, so I really want to dive into more of her books. This follows Trevor and Lexi and they they live in the same duplex. They are neighbors and they have been best friends since they were young. They really like each other but the thing was like they don't think that the other one likes them kind of thing you know and so they've been keeping it secret from one another for a long time which means there's no communication there so that's what kind of bothered me about it but you know um I felt like I read this for a really long time <laughs> I was like where are we going to get to this but I don't want to mention it because some of y'all would really enjoy this probably uh as a friends to lovers story if you're I said I really wanted them to talk sooner and get together sooner but still the ending is definitely satisfying and I wanted to mention it just kind of an honorable mention for friends to lovers the book that I want to recommend 
recommend is Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. Read this last year. It was so good. Gave it four stars. This was my second Catherine Center book I had read and after the reading The Bodyguard, which I recommended last year. It had a very interesting plot that I had never heard anything about. It had a character had facial blindness. And this book really gave a good insight to that because I'd never heard of that before and so our main character is Sadie she's a portrait artist and she has to have brain surgery uh, after having a seizure in the grocery parking lot because I have the kind that you're born with it's the kind that just happens um, after a surgery and so you don't know if she's going to have this forever is it going to go away at some point but as a portrait artist she is just devastated at this point and so she, especially because she has this competition that she's supposed to compete in within like six weeks and so she's struggling financially some drama here with like a stepsister I want to say or something like that her mother had passed away and so that's why she's really wanting to get in this competition because it was one I think that her mom was supposed to do back then and so there's no guarantee that this condition is going to resolve right she meets two different guys and so what I love about this is like I know this is a love triangle but just trust me on this or read it I, I can't say nothing else but it has this love triangle that's like I don't know, I can't even explain it. It's so good. And then really it's not like a love triangle truly because one of the guys is obviously more in this story than the other. Like, you know who she's supposed to be with. I think she's kind of going from there and she's working through like, is she going to be able to do this uh, competition? Like I said, and going through the motions of her diagnosis and all these things. And she has this evil stepsister. Like, I literally could not stand the stepsister. Like, what was that girl? Please. But the story was still good, okay? Uh, the romance was sweet. The twist is really great and it's very bingeable. So highly recommend this. I, like I said, get four stars. There is some language in this. Let me look at my review here because I've been looking at my notes. You can probably tell. Sorry if I'm looking at my notes, y'all. But memory. <laughs> okay. But uh, there is five F words in this, 10 to 15 S words, and other mild words that are used. But the sexual content is clean. And um, just wanted to mention that. And there was like some steamy kisses and discussions about sex. But it's still a clean romance in general. Overall, I still recommend this story. The next book, again, I don't own this one. I need to get these on my shelf, y'all. But it's Pixels and Paint by Christy and Hunter. Had a great time with this. I gave it five stars. It didn't make my top 20 of the year, but at the time, I just was loving it, you know? So, probably now, I probably would have given it four stars, but still, it was a really good one. You know, this was so much fun. Uh, we have Opposites Attract here, okay? Uh, it's a Christian contemporary romance, and it, it just has this fun world of art technology kind of put together here look we have carter anderson and he's been struggling to find inspiration for his paintings and he ends up seeing this girl emma at this local art show and so emma's not too thrilled to be there there's like all this drama with like her family and stuff and he could definitely tell it immediately he is so fascinated with her and she becomes this inspiration for him for art and he hadn't been able to create art in two years so like she has become the inspiration for him and so she is truly an answer to his prayers in that moment and he says that Emma is a true people pleaser. Um, me. I really could relate to her. She's trying to make everybody happy. Her mom, her sister, her co-workers, and she needs to take care of herself. And I had been there, okay? You, you can't make everybody happy. She's just constantly trying to appeal to people's wishes. And so we see her really grow in this book, and I loved that. Uh, she started to realize, like, who she is, and regardless of what everybody else wanted, she realized who she was in this book, and I loved that. She her family to be proud of her, so... In the beginning of the story, that's why she ends up kind of getting in a situation that is an art project she's not really prepared for, okay? And that's when Carter comes in, and he is talking all things art appreciation, and she's like, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Like, she's all into, like, technology and stuff, and, like, he is all into art, and she's like, I don't have any art appreciation for this at all. And so, they end up getting to know each other on some few dates. Opposites attract completely. Yeah, I'm so glad I read this. It was a lot of fun. It's a good uh, rom-com and a good STEM romance. Next on my list, we have got Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. This was very cute. It's a secular romance, but it's clean, and this Four stars it's set in Italy. I need to continue on in the series. This book really transports you right in Italy. We have all this great food, romance, art, all the good things that Italy would have. Lena goes to Italy. It's her mother's dying wish so that she could go meet her father. When she gets there. She doesn't expect to uh, be given a journal of her mother's past life and everything when she was in Italy. And so she starts to read the journal and she's uncovering all of her mother's past secrets. And she ends up meeting this guy, Ren. <laughs> we'll call him Ren. Uh, but he's Lorenzo. And the two 
form this budding romance. They're working together to kind of figure out everything from her mom's journals and the rest is history. I really enjoyed this. It's it's just a really good feel-good story. Very clean and sweet. Um, there are a few small bits of language in this, but it was like very, very small. There's one psychic reading in this as well. So just for, for, so that you're aware of that. But other than that, it's clean. It is very YA leaning. So I think I give it more like a 3.75, 3.5 to 4, but it was still a good time. And I recommend this if you're looking for something that's fun and will pull at your heartstrings a little so bit. The next book is Autumn by the Sea by Melissa Tag. I actually don't have this book on my shelf right now. My friends is borrowing it to read it. Uh, but this is book one in the Muir Harbor series. I should take my romance, but it's so much more than just your typical romance. We have this true found family in this story. And I love that it just shows this beautiful process of how the Lord was leading our main character, Sydney, and Neil to one another. You can truly see that in this book. Sydney was really led to this family for a reason. And I love that. And Neil, he's Scottish, so say less. In this, we follow Maggie Muir. She's trying to find her lost granddaughter. And uh, there's, there was an accident many years ago where her daughter passed away. Nobody could find the granddaughter after the accident. And so the search ends up leading her to Sydney Rose. And no one knows if Sydney is truly her granddaughter. There's been a lot of other people that they found. And it's like, is she really her? Because uh, everything has been a dead end at this point. Um, but Sydney comes to Muir Blueberry Farm. And I loved the farm. So good. But she ends up meeting Maggie's adoptive children and family. And Neil is the only one who technically wasn't adopted. Uh, but... Uh, he's been part of their family ever since he was a teenager. And Sydney has always wondered about her family. She feels like she's never truly uh, belonged anywhere. See her and Neil starting to get to know each other. The content in this was good. And so, yeah, I just highly recommend this as a good Christian romance. What I want to mention is Memory Lane by Becky Wade. I know in my last video, I talked a lot about Becky Wade, but we didn't talk about Memory Lane, okay? This was one that she released last year. Really enjoyed it. Gave it four stars. And book two is Rocky Road. I have finished it as of filming this video. So you'll see more of my thoughts at the end of month wrap up, but my review is already up on Goodreads and my blog. So I'll go ahead and leave that below if you want to read it for those that need to know. <laughs> but I, I end up giving it four stars as well. This is book one in the Sons of Scandal romance on this remote island in Maine. And we have Remy Reed and she spends a lot of her time working on wood sculptures in this small town, spending a lot of time quiet to herself. One day she sees this unknown man like out to sea, <laughs> swimming in the ocean, trying to stay afloat, honey. They rescue him. They take care of him. And it's like, what? Who is this guy? And so um, he has no memory of who he is. We end up seeing Remy and her friend Leah take care of him and, and just try to work to help him get better. This is a serious case of amnesia, okay? He ain't got no idea. <laughs> so I love a good amnesia story, okay? That's, I just love that. I was mostly connected to our guy here more so than Remy, but still overall really enjoyed it. It's like the romance a lot in this book. I would have liked a little more faith. That was where this book like liked a little bit for me, but overall I still really enjoyed this book and I get four stars. What I'm talking about is Just Don't Fall by Emma St. Clair. This is my first Emma St. Clair book. You know that she writes a lot of good clean rom-coms. This is book one in the Sweater Weather series, which Can't Help Falling I think was book three, but I, those are the only two books I've read in this series. This one had a little bit more of the fall vibes than the other one I was talking about for Courtney Walsh, but still I think you can read these early any time. They are just a really good time. This, this is a good hockey romance. Fake dating, slow burn, brother's best friend, childhood crush, and you know, never been kissed, female main character. The characters have great chemistry and it does have some good fall vibes, like I said. But in this one, we have Logan Barnes and he's like this pro hockey t hockey player who left town many years ago and now he's back and he's playing for the minor league team in town. In comes Parker and she is the team's social media manager and the girl he ghosted many years ago when he just took up and left, okay? So there's kind of some animosity or like hard feelings that's left over between them because she did, he just up and left many years ago and he was her brother's best friend and her first crush and so it's very awkward at first you're just like what is this it start to happen and logan and parker end up being like fake girlfriend boyfriend kind of thing and you're like what's gonna happen next so yeah it was a really good story highly recommend uh i love seeing them reconnect and him trying to explain like his story of why he left and all you start to learn all about that and it, it was just a really good sports romance okay it's this gala that they went to that was so good there was a dance i loved it um that was my favorite part and i love a good fake dating story as well so there was a scene that they filmed in the TikTok, whatever, that I was like, whatever with, but, so that's why I was like, this is four star, but, <laughs> but uh, I still really enjoyed the story, and I think that a lot of y'all would too. Real quick, I've already talked about Randy Blake a ton, but Truth is a Whisper, this is book one in the Wolf Creek Ranch series, I got four and a half stars, and then almost everything is book two, I think I gave it four and a half, rounded up to five, this one was four and a half, rounded down to four, <laughs> so they are like these perfect Hallmark style cheese cowboy romances, and they're more like slash cheese, not a block of cheese, a really good time, and so this one was Ava and Jameson, it's the Christian cowboy romance, set in a ranch, the guy's a Christian but the girl's not but she's starting to believe um 
it has some good faith elements. I wanted more of her faith, I think, at the end of this, if I remember right. But either way, um, the guy's a protector. We love to see that, too. Um, there's a lot of prayers. They go to church, discussions uh, about Jesus and reading their Bible. So I love that. Uh, they have a good family element because there's a good uh, precious grandfather in this. Um, and then romance is a little bit quicker, but not fully in still love, I guess. I don't know. It's like they feel like they knew each other for a short time. But again, she's one of those that if she does in still love, you really don't even feel like it is. So it's a good time. And I guess we could call this second chance romance. Like the whole book starts off with Ava being forced to leave him. And she had like only known him for a little bit, maybe two weeks or something. And was like, really really liked him and her mom's making them leave she has a very controlling mother in this and so we cut then we cut the story to six years later when they're meeting back up and a, when ava comes to visit the grandfather on the ranch and so that's kind of what happens here and so lots of family drama in that <laughs> in this one we have uh maybe i'm biased because they had to name blake but <laughs> in this we have blake and everly and blake he is a football player who has left his career for small town life five years ago and so he's his friend ridge is up needing help and being closer to everly is really great because he has been in love with her for years okay so uh you know it's just the whole thing where he's like he's been in love with her that kind of thing they really pursued anything but he's taken everly to the airport she's engaged to david he's a total jerk the book starts off with blake driving everly to the airport to get on a plane to see david but in comes pictures of how david been cheating on her and the rest of history because she's like i ain't going to see you blake picks up the pieces okay <laughs> and he's a he's a protective guy and we love to see that too so i just really like this their interactions were really cute there's some good faith in this i really liked how they handled the whole living together thing like in this they're they stand firm in their beliefs like i think she had like no choice but to have to stay with there at his place um and it ends up being like once they start having villains, it's like, no, we don't need to be here. You know, like she has, she's like, I need to find a place. I can't be living here with you. And like, that was really nice to see. And so, yeah, it's just a um, very refreshing story in that regard. And I need to read book three. That's all I can say. I need to read book three. So there was some uh, content in here, if I remember, just very briefly about the ex-fiance. He was kind of crazy and obsessive and kept coming around. We're like, look, you're, you got here. And he was like yelling and pushing her a little bit. So that was that was mentioned in here a little bit, but it was like very brief. So I just want to mention that. I got the love script by Tony Shallow. This is a Christian contemporary romance. It has fake dating, all the good things. Lamont and this girl, Nevea, he is over there at his place. Like she uh, helps take care of his mother and do does her hair. And so she's sick and stuff. So she's over there helping out and she makes like, soup or something and she's in, she's about to leave and so she the paparazzi basically catches them lamont and her in this like awkward position and he is a christian who has been you know um very clear about his christian values and the picture paints him in a bad light and so there's all these discussions there they end up having a fake date and the rest is history <laughs> so they talked about sex before marriage in this and the importance of you know abstaining and uh, how it was okay to completely okay to wait so i really appreciated that i think we need that portrayed more in books here especially for our younger generation god is ever present in this story and i love how a tony always weaves in prayer and church and all those things and god's plan for our life and it was just really good so uh, they really prayed through every situation that they were like trying to figure out what they were going to do they prayed through their decision making i should say so that was really great to see as well so uh love that one gave it five stars obviously oh, next door by tammy o gray i know i mentioned this recently as well but this has katie stone she is back in town she has a bad reputation from being in her past and so we got this guy next door he is wonderful asher he's the best book boyfriend this is a christian contemporary romance by the way uh, there's good faith content in this and he is helping her throughout her process of fighting with her family and her ex-boyfriend's coming back in and her past keeps getting brought up and she's trying to learn how to forgive herself and move on and and he's got some baggage as well with stuff he had going on in his church story really does bring you through it and i cried it's very uh, it's a heavy read but it was so so good and i need to read book two <laughs> that's all i can say tammy i'll cry yes uh then of course we've got the letter tree by rachel fordham this is like a romeo and juliet i'm kind of speeding up right now sorry but i've already talked about these books so um it's like romeo and juliet um you've got male type story the romeo Romance is so, so good. It was one of my favorite books of last year. Rachel Fordham is top tier. Like the narration of this, I listened to audiobook, is so good. So I had to purchase my own copy. You already know. But it's set in 1924. This is more like historical. I know I'm not saying contemporary. So the reason I'm throwing this in here is because the romance is like ever present. Okay. Uh, a lot of times you read a historical and it's more historical fiction than romance. And this is truly more romance. Okay. Like true romance. And we have so many good interactions with them. I loved it. Uh, our main character, Laura, and um, what was his like? 
Isaac from <laughs> other names. But they have like a family feud thing going on, kind of like a Romeo and Juliet stuff. They're writing letters back and forth. Don't know they're writing letters back and forth with each other at the Buffalo Zoo. And it's just a good time. The whole story is so good. I, I can't say anything else. But um, yeah, it's great. Uh, <laughs> then we're going to say Dear Henry Love Edith, cutest Christian rom, rom, rom com. Oh my gosh, rom com. I'm like, talk too long. Um, but cutest Christian rom com. Uh, read this in 24 hours. Got to meet Becca Kinzer. It was just the best best experience I had last year. Loved it. And I think this will make a great movie. It's kind of got this whole you've got male thing as well in this. Characters are young, but they think each other is old. <laughs> so they're writing letters back and forth. This whole thing, and they, then they end up actually meeting, and they don't really know it's the end that they're meeting. It's just it's all this good stuff, you know. Like we see all this good stuff happening. Okay, you laugh out loud a lot, and you know I like how they were very relatable characters in their 30s and it was a good time so yeah best christian rom-com love it and then we've got a novel proposal i talked about this already recently but denise hunter she has a new release coming out in march so hopefully i enjoy that but this one was her release from last year and this was kind of like a clean version of um beach read by emily henry the girls going to the beach she's an author and so she's like needing to kind of get away so she can write a romance book she never really had any kind of romance experience to write a book but her publisher says you need to quit writing westerns and you need to write a romance she goes there's a duplex she's staying there the guy next door in the duplex uh you know they kind of connect a little bit and there she puts like this uh, little free library up front and one of the books that gets put in there has an engagement ring and there's a mystery surrounding whose engagement ring is this and it's just a good time the romance is really cute i love this one at four stars really great spring to summer read and then the last ones i have on my shelf and it's like the last ones i hope okay i know i missed something but we're here and i this is like honorable mention because i know i talked about authentically izzy last year y'all know is a favorite book okay authentically izzy by pepper basham so good definitely one of my favorite books actually probably the favorite book her, I don't know. It's like my favorite book she wrote, okay? But book two I read last year, and that's why I'm bringing this up, okay? <laughs> so, Positively Penelope was book two, and Penelope is just so perfectly, I don't know, just magical. Like, she's just so bubbly and just makes you happy to read. It, this is just a true comfort series. Book three, Loyally Luke, comes out in May, so I'm gonna be reading that. I've got a PDF I need to read from her. This whole series is, is told in emails and text messages and stuff like that. Um, this one, Authentically Izzy, has more of the text and emails than P P Penelope does. Uh, I think probably like the first 30% of Penelope is text and emails, but then the actual narrative picks up here, okay? So I want to mention that. Um, audiobook is the way to go with this personally for me. I love the narration, okay? Um, but I did physically read this on my Kindle last year, but the audiobooks are just so good. They have the same narrators for both books, and I think they're narrating the third one as well, so that's always fun because there's like different voices for different characters and stuff. Um, but what makes this book, this series so wonderful is the cast characters. Penelope is wonderful. She's very positive and kind and everything, and so we kind of get this grumpy sunshine type thing where this guy Matt is dealing with like a hardship with his divorce and the loss of his mother and grandmother he doesn't really know how to begin again in life and uh until he meets penelope and it's just so good i love his daughter so sweet she's her name's iris so good we have this good single dad i love a good single dad in the story trying to make everything right again with his life and find love again sign me up so yeah it kind of has like trying to be a little bit of a love triangle but you know who she's gonna be with right like we know um because there's two different brothers here and things some things going on but she's with uh matt for like n most of the story and like you know that she's with Matt the whole time right but like their other brother tries to kind of come in and there's some drama there so it, it's okay with that but I still gave this five stars I mean I think AZ is my favorite because all the Lord of the Rings references in this I have a whole video dedicated to this I'll leave below if you've not seen it most of y'all have um like I did a whole vlog for that and it has like Andy Griffith references and all that stuff it's so good uh but this one is really more for like the theater um still bookish lover but the theater lover really is gonna love this because it's got sound of music you know Grease, Cinderella, Ram Bo, Julie Andrews, all that stuff in this, and it's really great. So, highly recommend this series if you've not read it. Uh, it just, it's like that feel good story you need at the time, you know, it's just really good. So, yeah, those are all the book recommendations I have. I wanted to just talk about the books I've read over the last year that are Christian or clean, closed door type books, um, just so I can have it all in one video, just like I did before. And I'll do this again next year, just trying to tie in everything that I have read and gave usually about a four or five star rating, uh, some 3.75s and honorable mentions that I mentioned here. But I hope you 
enjoyed this video. Sorry if I've repeated a lot, I know. But some of y'all said, look, I love the being reminded, okay? I asked one of my friends, I said, is it bad if I'm repeating these books over and over? And then she's like, girl, I forget. So it's <laughs> just like, it's fine. Plus I put the timestamps down so you can kind of skip around that kind of stuff if you want. But um, thank you for being here. <laughs> if you've made it this far, thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you all have a very blessed Valentine's Day and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all.